So the base of this patch is one oscillator in the very low frequency that goes into the tau pipe phaser and then it goes into the granular audio processor. The phaser is gonna output straight into the granular audio processor, which is a cloud. I take the left and right output of the phaser, plug it into the granular audio processor, which is the clouds. Let's hear the base of this patch. So I take output from the Q141. It is an oscillator aid to the Q106. We'll hear the oscillator without any treatment, well, minimally. you can hear two clicks this is because it's a square wave I'm gonna start with a ramp recently I discovered if I put this impulse which is just a low frequency oscillator we just hear the peak of the ramp if I move it into the audible range Ah, this phaser is already doing something to the stereo field. I'm gonna put some resonance and you'll hear the magic of this phaser. Instant bongo. I can move the manual frequency or This has quite a range. So now I will just sweep that manual frequency, but with a LFO. Isn't that juicy? Yeah, I would like to add a sequence. So I would make the phaser follow the sequencer. How would I do that? Well, first I'm gonna take a pulse out of the oscillator, this one. Pulse out, malt it, because I want to do many things with it. So we understand that the pulse out and the output here is the same frequency because it's the same oscillator. So this will give me the clock for the sequencer, the modular moon 569. So now the 569 is running. Anyway, the first row, I'm using four times eight. So I'm gonna take the voltage control out of the first row here and put it into the CV. Now I'm gonna complicate things a bit. The first sequence here is running to complicate things a bit more. I'd like two sequences that would control the frequency of the phaser. Like I want a main sequence and another sequence that will change slowly. The tempo of the second sequence will be divided by four. In order to achieve that, I'm gonna use the gate math. I take the pulse out that's being mulled and into input of the gate math. Okay, you can see the sequence is running the same tempo as the oscillator. I'm gonna take output three here. The fourth row is running 
it's divided by 8. So the clock that you hear, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this sequence here is running 8 times slower than the first one. And the third row, I want it also uh, to run at 16 times lower. What is that going to do? So CV out of first row, I'm putting it into a mixer because I want two sort of CVs to control the pitch of the tau pipe and put one of the mixer. And a third row here to input two. Okay, now let's take the output of the mixer and I'll plug it into minus a volt per octave of the, the phaser. See what it does. Let's make it faster. Wouldn't it be fun if the fourth row of the sequencer would control the frequency of the oscillator? Depending on where the buttons are, it would create kind of ratchet. CV out into the CV in of the oscillator, exponential frequency. Put it at zero for now. Remember in the beginning, I said I want a ramp instead of a pulse. I'm gonna put a pulse. Oh, it doubles. If I change the pulse width, it's gonna swing. Hey, let's put some delay, because the granular audio processor can be a delay. But I'd like this delay to be clocked to the oscillator. The oscillator is going into this small tier. So I'm gonna, oh, I have one left. I'm gonna take this output and put it into the trigger input of the granular audio processor. And I'm gonna plug it into the trigger. Yeah. reverb let's bring that ratchet so this patch is only made with a low frequency oscillator and the tau pipe phaser. This is the only source of sound. The rest is just control voltage over the frequency of the phaser and the frequency of the oscillator. If I change the color, it gives me kinds of timber. <laughs> 